Tell us about your film credits. So I said sure. that. Oh. I said, <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, this isn't my fault. The other day we, talk, we were talking about a movie and Mason was like, well, I, I was in that. <laughs> yeah, you say that. I haven't watched it. I haven't watched the film. I just know I'm in it. <laughs> So somewhere which, which film you probably won't see me okay it's uh yesterday danny boyle's film from a couple of years ago about the guy who uh, does he get knocked out or something i say i watch it so but he's the only person who yeah. remembers the beatles so yes. then he uses that knowledge to just use the beatles songs as his own and become a superstar and obviously you know i think i haven't seen it so you disparaging of it in just the way. I've seen a trailer. Okay. Well, and I'm not in the trailer, so I was so like, well, I'm not going to watch it. So they're <laughs> making it into the trailer. This is yeah. ridiculous. I get yeah. left on a cutting room floor. <laughs> happens to people all the time. <laughs> it happens to me. It's going to happen to you on this show. <laughs> and I'm like, you edit yourself out. <laughs> 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 so in yesterday, it's good. It's not only the, uh, because the Beatles aren't there, there's a couple of other things which um, never happened. So I think one of them obviously is Oasis. So Oasis just didn't happen. <laughs> no, no, no one knows what that is. Um, I think like maybe there's uh, like Pepsi or Coca-Cola didn't kick off because the Beatles did something in the 60s or whatever. There's like a few oh. random things which just aren't in that world. Um, and he's searching for them and finding it. Hmm. I nearly didn't watch it because it's like a British movie and that's not really my bag. Hmm. I, I just, I don't know. It just kind Written of by me. Richard Curtis as well, which who wrote? like Notting Hill and all Love Actually stuff. and stuff. All yeah. the good stuff. All the good stuff <laughs> <laughs> that we always watch. Constantly. Yeah. I like the beginning of Full Reddings in a Few Minutes. It's my favourite word 11 times a row. Um, but, um, so I wasn't going to watch it, but we finally put it on because I think I watched a trailer and was just like, this is kind of cool. Uh, I like the premise of, of having that removed because I'm a songwriter and I know covers. <laughs> It'd be great <laughs> to see people think, oh, like, yeah, you wrote those. Um, but it's actually quite nice. It's actually quite nice all the way through. And there's a few little thing, things that drop in. I'm not going to spoil the film because you should watch it. It is a Danny Boyle movie, I guess, is the difference, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and no matter. I love Danny Boyle. Exactly. That's why I did it. That's why I. Because you wanted to be in a Danny yeah, Boyle film. Yeah. But not watch it. Well, it wasn't Train Spot 3. So you, you're, you're happy to. Did you think that's what it was? <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> I knew that Richard Curtis had wrote the script. Uh -huh. It didn't have. It had some working title, which sounded like a rom com. I was like, okay, but it doesn't. I'm still be in it mm. somewhere. The love bug. Uh, yeah, some, it, uh, it actually might have been that. It was something, something like that. I read trivia late at night, so it could be. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. Might have been. So what's it like? When, so you're on the beach in the final scene, and he's doing the rooftop gig, just yeah. like he just did. So that is that was uh, in Galston. So my actual hometown is Lowestoft. That's the most easterly point of England facts um but at this point i am living in norwich so <laughs> east uh -huh. yeah the That's rump west. yeah <laughs> did the wrong way <laughs> Go anyway um but yeah Goulston is the next town over uh i heard that he was filming around there and he wanted five thousand extras to be on the beach um okay. as the guy came out and played one of the beatles songs so me and mate, because it's free, and they would pay us in food. Nice. It's like okay, like those things. It was, it was like I want to say in June, May time. Oh, nice. So so it's, on the yeah, beach, sunny day. Exactly. A couple of tinnies. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so we just drove up there. The Danny Boyle Festival. Danny Boyle. Um, when I got there, and we were trying to find a spot. He was actually walking around with the DOP, and so cool. And he still got a sneaky selfie with him. But um, I don't think the restraining order would enjoy that. So. <laughs> One of those selfies where, like, if you look in the back, past that, it's just the back of his that, head. Behind that like, hand. I swear that's, that's him. him. Yeah, definitely him. So that. That's his shoe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember there's a there's a picture or a bit of uh, I think Queen playing Wembley Stadium in the eighties, mm. and my mum is absolutely still positive that on, <laughs> on a poster, right? And it's like, no, she's not even in the front. <laughs> She's right at the back, back, oh. right on the side. She's like, I was wearing a red jumper that day, so and that, that right there is a wee bit of red. That's me. Like, okay. That's what it's like. You're a tiny little woman. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great big stadium. It could be a fire. Yeah. Uh, what, and what, what? Do you just listen to the same song all day? So, if I think it was just the one scene that they were repeating on and off all yeah. day. 
Um, yeah, he wanted 5,000 extras, 6,000 people turned up, but they still catered for everyone. Jesus. They had helicopters doing helicopter shots over <laughs> us, just playing the same song, and people just looking like they're enjoying Loving themselves. It. So yeah. you're having to act? Slightly, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, after listening to any song like three times in a row. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then by about midday, he said, okay, we've got most of the shots. If you want to stick around, you can go home or you can stay. Because I think they were going to duplicate, I don't know what it looks like in the, full, mm. in the uh, final film, but I think they were going to duplicate all the crowd shots to make it look like the whole beach was Right. Full. It, looks, it looks busy. I don't know. It looks real busy. No, I'll, have to, I'll have to watch it. It's good. It's another one of Ed Sheeran's classics as well. Axe's socks off. <sighs> yeah, that's right. why I haven't watched it. <laughs> hush. I fell the room. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but you might, you maybe you see me in there. I think I was wearing a green jacket. Maybe. Oh God, it's like my mum. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see me in the back, that, that smidge of green. That's a, I was near the back. Yeah. That's, of course you'll be in the back. I know you. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> back in the bus, having a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? Yeah. Daddy, daddy, daddy. <laughs> boy, boy, boy. <laughs> <laughs> that's me all over of course it is you all over um right well it was fun it was fun it was a fun day out when you're not filming with illustrious directors like danny boyle mm. also have a podcast sir do you have a podcast um a bit like this but we don't actually record ourselves video wise just so unless when we really feel photogenic nice. um yeah it's called the rogue specs podcast just I know that. no you don't okay you don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, I just started it, uh, I want to say three years ago now, with my mates from uni, because um, we always talk about film and TV and mm -hmm. games and stuff. Um, and then we also recommend what we've been watching like in the month. It's a, We only do it once a month, but um, sort of a hobby. And then I guess it's sort of serious. I mean, we've been going, I think we're coming up to our 50th episode soon. It's amazing. Which, if we're doing one a month, I guess that's it's incredible. And just doing it for longevity. It's the only way you see success in podcasting is being consistent to whatever that is. Yeah, like absolutely whatever that is. I want to keep talking, and you can uh, flick a light for me. How's that? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to make. So yeah, so Mason's going to produce while while this is happening. Oh, okay, well. <laughs> this is it. Either the batteries weren't charged or it was left off. But nah, don't worry about them. Um, but actually, having consistency with podcasting is the only way, right? It's the only way that any podcast sees any kind of uh, recognition. You start to see people coming back. Uh, it's like any serialized show, right? I want to know that I'm going to have my stories on a Tuesday. I know I'm going to get to have on a Wednesday morning, that show is going to be available. And without that, I'm not going to come back. It's very easy as soon as you miss that consistency and that regularity of a show then people just turn off and don't think to look at it. They're going to go and find something else to fill that void on a Tuesday morning or whatever that show is meant to be out. So sticking with it, like Mason's and, and his guys have done, and actually just kept it up every month, every stinking month for three straight years, just having, you know, being able to actually get together, sit down, do that show. How long's the show, Mace? Uh, usually go for like two hours. Oh, and yeah. it's a two hour show as well. Yeah, so, it's awesome. And it's not an easy thing, you know, Tony and I, we managed Ooh. to do, um, I think 50 or 62 episodes, 63 episodes of How to Write a Tune. Uh, incredibly well produced, well done. Um, <laughs> but we did, and that was over a period of like 18 months because we went weekly because it was, you know, that was a good idea apparently. And I think the only difference from releasing weekly to releasing monthly hmm. is you might see recognition a little quick, quicker because you're out there a lot more, right? You get, yeah. You get, you get once a week, every week, you're out there kind of waving your hand as opposed to once a month, and it might take a little bit longer to build that community. But once you've got people and they know that every month there's a show, mm -hmm. I mean, Dan Carlin, his, his consistency is the fact he's not consistent, but drops like one or two things a year. Yeah. Some years. Okay, people keep coming back for that, but they're like, <laughs> that's an event show, right? Yeah. That's like the Rolling Stones gig, are they tour all the time? But it's, you know, the, the one off gig that happens and you have to attend comes out. Every other show has got to be on a real regular basis and just kind of without that, you're just not going to see it. And also, you don't get good. Yeah. Right? Think how much better you guys are year three now than you mm, were. Me, especially. Oh, you really? should just in the first episode because I was scared of this mic. 
<laughs> Why? <laughs> what do you mean? I, I just because the other guys they had done like at uni they were doing the uni podcast okay. they were doing radio shows right i was the film tv guy i was like well that's not my way so were you always like, behind the like, scenes up until then yeah i was always behind the camera or just chilling out yeah and uh i thought microphones are scary but no I've but got, it's tough used to it. but it is it's tough it to is. be natural it's actually it's really it's like you know just be yourself mm. it's just the worst advice ever <laughs> Just be yourself on that date. You'll be fine. Like, how do I be myself? Is do I do I do I sit like? Is is this how I sit? Do I play my beard? Do I never play my beard? Like, you know, do I say fabulous a lot? I don't know. Right? But it's it's difficult just to say be natural and be relaxed. And I think the only way to do it is break the seal. Yeah, and just keep doing it and keep doing it until you. Mm. I remember re-listening to episodes. And being like, cool. So I interrupt people all the time. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's another good point mm. i always listen back to myself and say okay what could i do mm. better there and then there's one of my co-hosts who just never i know oh, oh, I, I won't okay i won't Don't. okay ollie yeah, I'm exactly sorry, isn't it? Like, I it's ollie. It ollie um he just never well he does listen back when we force him to but um i think if he was to listen back more he would notice he could like adjust his levels a bit more or mm -hmm. just uh because he's always creaking back on the chair he's always taking sips of drink he's always <laughs> he's always making noises um sorry mason. no no it's okay sorry mason you're the future <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that's the person you really should be <laughs> but actually i know that i know that from time and i think that's the I, that's where a great producer comes in though hmm. that's where a great producer comes in to help hosts like me because i don't listen to my show anymore because i'm far too egotistical no um i'm just too busy and i don't want to put myself in the way of the process to like not listen to it to say you know as long as you get to a point where you know it's working mm. and well, and i still cool. and, and what's nice now is obviously we release the show in 12 minute clips on youtube mm -hmm. i'm able to jump in a lot easier and just listen to a little bit and be like yeah and jump into the middle of a show yeah so and it's like i'm all super excited and full of beans and just had a coffee and then what's it like 40 minutes in when i'm starting to get a little lax and a little loose and and get that i also found language there's certain things i would be like oh i say that all the time doesn't make the impact that I think it's making mm. like as you know awesome or you know groovy I use groovy like all the time anyway but I was I used to use it a lot more groovy yeah, yeah what groovy, have you been groovy. saying recently you've been saying bam around what's that <laughs> I don't know <laughs> <laughs> it's just a fun noise to make bam around it's the first thing I heard when I walked in this one no I think that oh something's something's going down okay. yeah that's what it feels like it's yeah like, and we'll see if we can get it in the Oxford Dictionary 